Blog Talk Radio. Uh, you know what time it is. It's time to hang out yeah. with Mr. Cool. With Mr. Koopa, with Mr. Koopa, with Mr. Koopa. Get the latest scoop from Mr. Koopa, from Mr. Koopa, from Mr. Koopa. Hey, we're Mr. Koopa, we're Mr. Koopa, we're Mr. Koopa. Get the latest scoop from Mr. Koopa, from Mr. Koopa. Welcome to the Bit Scoop with Coop. I'm your host, Coop. Season five still going strong, people. <clears throat> Excuse me, going to do a little sinus problems. But if you haven't already, make sure you go to the website www.thebigscoopwithcoop.com where you can actually catch episodes from season one all the way up to season five. Make sure you do follow me on Instagram and Twitter at M C O O P three one seven. Also, make sure you catch me on Facebook. You can catch me Facebook Live at Facebook.com forward slash The Big Scoop with Coop. All right, guys, we actually have an excellent show today. Um, <clears throat> today's guest, if you are actually a fan of the Death Race series, you're going to love um, today's guest. She is actually a successful actress. She has done big things. <clears throat> Excuse me. She has done big things. Also, she has actually... Um, you have seen her in different things. Also, you will actually get to see her in the new movie, Death Race 2050. So, like I said, she's doing big things. Also, guys, I want you to get a chance also that you can catch me on Periscope. So the show is also live on Periscope, Facebook. Once again, make sure you check out the website, Facebook.com. I'm sorry, the Big Scoop with Coop.com. And once again, Twitter and Instagram at MCOOP317. Um, also, I just want to, before I even introduce the guest today, I also want to tell everyone, make sure that you have a happy holidays with your family, your friends, your associates, whoever you're going to be with. I hope everyone has a early Merry Christmas. So I just want to say thank you for everyone that's listening right now. But enough about me. Once again, my guest today, um, you'll catch her on Death Race 2050. She is a successful actress. She is doing big things. And I want you to make sure that you tell your family, your friends, your associates, your haters to tune in right now because we're about to have on the show right now the one, the only, Falake Alawafe, I'm sorry, Alawafoye Koo. Welcome to the show. Hello, Falake, you there? Yeah, hi. How are you? Hi, how are you? Hey, doing great. And yourself? I'm great, thank you. Great, thank you. All right, all right. How's your day so far? Uh, it's been uh, it's been quite busy. It's been quite busy, <laughs> but um, I get to relax now and have a chat with you. Hey, and that's how, awesome. how's your day been? Oh man, it's been busy also, but I've been waiting for today because I finally got you on the show. So I am definitely happy uh-huh. about that. Um. On this show, just to let you know, we do talk about how you started in your career, your success, give advice on how to get into your career, and much more. And I hope your fans worldwide is listening right now because I know we have a worldwide audience listening. Um, so I have to ask you straight up, um, when was the first time that you realized that you wanted to become an actress? Well, uh, I didn't realize that until I, I moved to New York uh, for college. I moved to, to New York for, for university, and um, it was sort of an act of desperation. I, I really wanted to be a musician, and I knew that from as as early as I can remember. I knew that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to make music, but um, it wasn't supported by my family, and um, it was very strongly um, denied. So I thought I, I thought to myself, well, you know, Maybe I could start with acting and then segue back into music, and that would be more tolerable for for my folks. Nice. And, and that's how I got into acting. And but it wasn't it wasn't until it wasn't until college. It was much later on in life or early in life, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> well, you know what the thing is. Even though what part of life it was, if you call it early or if you call it late, um, the thing is, it got into your mind and it stayed there. And it's to the point where I believe at any point in time, if you think about something and your heart desires for it, 
that's something that, you know, you always want to go for. And, you know, I always feel that anybody has a dream, they need to go for it. And look at you. You've done it. You're doing big things. So I got to give you your prop. Thank program. you. So I want to say congratulations I, um, to your career. Sorry, you, you broke up a bit there. And oh, I apologize. Oh, I said I do. Um, I just want to say thank you for everything. I applaud your career. You you kept it in your heart thank that you, you want to do this. And look at you. You're doing big things. And nobody can stop you. And your career is nowhere close to being ended. So you got Amen. big things for you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I think, yeah, I think um, part of it was certainly divine because this wasn't, this wasn't what I had mapped out in my head as a child. Um, yeah, so there's a, there's a little bit of... Um, a bigger power at work in terms of my journey and how, mm-hmm. how far I've gone and my decision to get into acting. Wow. Well, as far as right now, is there any regrets? Pardon me? Are there any regrets for... Are there any regrets? I- uh, you know, sometimes I wonder if I should have done things differently. Um, but for the most part, I think, I think um, I'm doing a good job and coming down the wrong uh, the right road i think um most of my my hesitation is it's around well feeling perhaps if i had a little bit more support uh, i would have been able to get further or or making decisions in terms of schooling just slightly differently but i think um for the most part I, i'm I, i'm in a good place so i try not to be too hard on myself and think about what could have been done differently because the fact is i can't do anything differently and, and you know what? Forward. And see, and you're doing the right thing, in my opinion. You really are. Um, I keep moving forward because, like I said, this career, you, I've seen your demo reel. I've seen what you can do. And you need to continue. Seriously, you really need to continue. Thank you are you. good at what you do. And no one can stop you. Nobody at all. Seriously. Thank you. Those um, are very, very kind words. I really appreciate them. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Definitely. Um, was there any obstacles that you had to go through um, besides, you know, your family that wasn't supporting you 100% on this, but were there any obstacles when you say, okay, I'm going to be an actress, and you say, I'm about to take my first step out there? Were there any obstacles that got in your way that you had to go through to become the successful actress that you are today? Uh, I mean, yeah, they're always, they're always like um, barriers and obstacles along the way. I um, The first one being... The fact that I had to pretty much just escape my home for artistic liberation and move to a different continent. So that was the first obstacle. How do I get to America? How do I get to a space where I'm allowed to be an artist and um, I'm not allowed to feel any judgment or negative um, feelings about wanting to to do that as a career? Um, I was also coming here coming to America, getting a visa to come to America, uh, finding a school. Uh, there's also, as, um, as, you, as, you, as you start to advance in your career, you, you want to be versatile, right? So I had to also learn an American accent or attempt to learn one. And uh, those are two things. Also, like, then the, there's the standard obstacles that come with the craft, finding an agent, um, getting a work visa, uh, finding a manager, uh, finding work and auditioning, and understanding that auditioning is um, a majority of what you do, what we really do. Our career really is, at least when you're starting off, um, is mostly auditioning. That's what you do for a living. You audition for a living, and maybe you have a part-time job to support you, but you audition and you face rejection. I mean, those are all small obstacles that come with the territory of being an actor, um, but specific to me, I think the biggest things for me were getting a, getting approval, and then after I got the approval from my family eventually, then also allowing myself feel, um, letting allowing myself let go of the negative stigma that was um, imposed on me, um, mm-hmm. and that that has really been one of the biggest battles mentally, um, allowing myself even after years of being told this is wrong and don't do this. Uh, as a career, and then finally getting acceptance from my from my parents, uh, the mental the mental stigma still still stayed with me. 
and um, I think I'm still working with that actually. And you know, and it's and it may stay with you for a minute because I mean, I, I think it's it's something that when I, I guess you don't want to disappoint people, but you know, you have a dream that you want to live at the same time. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. So it's like balancing that, and I understand I it's mean, pretty hard. A- I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you broke up there. I didn't hear you. Oh, okay. I said it's probably hard to balance that because you have you have people that you don't want to disappoint and you have goals at the same time. And you know, and you get out there and you took that trip. You made it here. You audition, you audition, and you audition. And you found you an agent and you were working. So I mean you was doing stuff to better yourself. And at the same time, I mean, I I understand where you're coming from, you know, trying to make that balance where it's going to be mentally in your head for the whole time. But you know what? You Even though you're still going through, but you know what? You've overcome at the same time. And I applaud you for that. I really do. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. you, you definitely don't want to, especially you don't want to disappoint your family and your parents. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a working process while I am still achieving my goals. Um, mm-hmm. I know it's something that I need to, to, to get over, Um and um, so far, so good. I think with, with each achievement, I'm slowly knocking off, knocking, that's uh, knocking down that wall. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Now, um, when you say you came over from America, if I'm not mistaken, you're from, um, by your name, you're Nigerian, correct? Yeah, I'm Nigerian. I mm-hmm. grew up in Lagos. Nice. So how is it different? What's yeah. the big difference between Nigeria and America in your eyes, as far as it goes for what you're doing in your career today? Well, what I'm doing in my career, um, well, acting-wise, the the biggest difference, I mean, we have Nollywood in Nigeria. It's the third biggest film industry in the world. So there are a lot of productions, and um, it's recognized worldwide as well. Um, I think the difference between when I first started acting in, in uh, over here in America versus if I had remained in Nigeria would probably have been um, the production, production value, the quality of the work. Um, they're doing a lot of great things now that are comparable to, to some projects over here in America. But um, I think that, that would have been the, the, the biggest difference. And, uh, and the reach also, the, the audience for uh, Nollywood is not as, obviously not as big as, as Hollywood is. And I, I get that. I get it. But you know what? The good thing is, even though you're here, um, there's still a chance for other people from Nigeria to, Nigeria to act also. So I commend all of you. Yes. Now, speaking about acting, um, did you have any mentors that helped you out to prepare you to become an actress? Um, I didn't have, no, I didn't have a lot of mentors, actually. I, I, I can't, I, I never specifically had a mentor, no. And it's one of the things I wish I had, I, w- I had the opportunity to 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 acquire um, that would be one of the things I wish I'd, I could have done differently and because of that I'm actually looking into it now um, mm-hmm. I didn't have an opportunity to find a mentor I didn't even know one existed when I was when I was um, studying Rem- remember I, I didn't have I didn't have a lot of support outside of school right. uh, so I was figuring everything out myself and having a mentor wasn't even something that it wasn't something that ever occur- occurred to me. So um, at this point, though, in my life, I understand the value of it, and I wish I'd had, I had. I wish I had it. I'm looking to to find one now. I would say the people that um, provided that sort of guidance to me would just, would be my professors. My professors in a, at City College in New York, uh, David Willinger, Keith Grant. It, it was it was a great department. They were working with very little, but they 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 were very. Um, were very forthcoming, and um, they tried. They tried as best as they could to teach us a lot. Nice. Well, the good thing is, you must. Uh, I can tell you picked it up because, like I said before, your skill is there. So you're doing big things, and um, we will talk about Death Race 2050 in a minute. But before we even get into that, now, Falake, if you could pick one dream actor and one dream actress of your choice, past, present or if you know somebody that's about to get into the movie industry now, who would you pick? What one actor and actress would you pick 
to work in any type of movie that's in your choosing, who would it be? Who would I like to work with? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, that's a tough question. There, I, I, I mean, when I was younger, I obviously had a lot of actors and actresses I looked up to. Coming in, into the industry um, now and being in the industry um, for some time now, I find that I am more drawn to everyday everyday heroes who inspire me. But as far as projects to, to work on, I would, I'd love to work with Quentin Tarantino. Ooh. Of course, um, uh, Brian Singer. Like I, I'm into sci-fi projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as actors and actresses, um, uh, Angela Bassett would be great to work with. Um, yeah. Yeah, Christopher Walken. You know, some of the greats, the greats. That's what I'm talking about. Now, Angela Bassett, if you're listening right now, Quentin Tarantino, all of you guys that you're listening, you heard her. Let's do something. Collaborate. I'm telling you. That's what yeah. And I think y'all can actually get that done. So let's go on and get in contact with her. Let's get everything done. Ms. Bassett, let's do it. I'm telling you, let's do it. Now, <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, um, now, Falake, let's talk about what everybody worldwide would like to hear about also right now. Death Race 2050, come out January 2017. I know you don't want to give um, the cat out of the bag, but can you give us, like, a description of the movie and what the movie is about? Okay, so Death Race 2050 is a remake of the original Death Race 2000, which came out in the 70s. And our Death Race 2050 is post-apocalyptic corporate America. And the things folks and citizens do <laughs> to pass their time and to entertain themselves. Um, it's, tough to, it's, tough to, it's tough to give a description without giving anything away, but what I can tell you, though, is that it is, it is morbid, and <laughs> it's morbid, it's a lot of fun, it's outrageous and inappropriate, uh, and it's um, very graphic. And it stay, if you've seen the original, it stays true to the, to the original one. And if you're a fan of the original, then you definitely love this. That's what I'm talking about. Now, where was it shot at? We shot that in uh, Lima, Lima, Peru. Mm-hmm. Nice. Now, Balake, yeah. I got to break up something. And I'm, I'm not laughing, but I am, and I'm going to call you Superwoman. Because I've heard a little <laughs> story about you. Now, and I'm going to let you tell the story, but I'm going to start the story off. You got invited okay. to a beach house, if I'm not mistaken. And some of you oh, and the no. cat. Yeah, yes, I think you know where I'm going with this one. And, and some yeah. of you and the cat was outside, and you wanted to be superwoman and pick up two women at one time. I, I want yeah. you to tell everybody about that. <laughs> yeah. It certainly wasn't my proudest moment, but it just seemed so doable and so easy. And then after I was told I couldn't do it, I felt like I had to prove myself. Uh, so I carried two of my uh, – we were at this beach house. The producer invited us to, to his place, and um, and we were hanging out on the beach. And two of the cast members carried each other. And I was like, yeah, I can totally carry both of them. <laughs> and they're like, no, I don't think you can. I'm like, yes, I can. And so I go, and I start to, and I, I, I achieve some success, but then we all fall back. And it was like a oh. funny moment, but I, I, messed up, I messed up my knee, and we wow. still had a lot of shooting to do. Wow. And if I'm not mistaken, your knee was swollen, and you had to do, um, not to give anything away, but if I'm not mistaken, didn't you have to do like a lot of walking on stage, on set, excuse me, the next day? Yeah, so the fo- the following day, the following day we shot this scene where all the characters are walking towards their car and it's supposed to, it's like a slow motion, really sexy scene. And my character has on um, really high boots. She, she's very sexy and she dresses very elaborately. And um, she had on high, high, knee-high boots, like six-inch heels. And um, I had to walk the span of maybe like about 5,000 feet. And we had to mm. do it in 
he had to do it over and over again, and he had to be sexy, and he had to look nice. But I was in excruciating pain because my knee was swollen. I thought it was broken. I wasn't sure what was going on with it. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, that was certainly one of the hardest scenes to shoot. Just walking. Man, Falake, I'm not gonna lie to you. See, they would have been mad at me on set because they would have been me. I'd have been like, "Cut, cut! Can somebody bring me a pair of Nikes or, <laughs> or something?" Nah, oh, yeah, the, show, the show must go on. Whew, I applaud you on that. You, I really applaud you because my knee's swollen. If I was a woman, my knee's swollen. I'm in them boots. They would have thought I was a pimp. I'd have been pimp walking so hard that day. It, it would have been hurting. So I applaud you on that. You you did your thing, girl. You really did your thing. Thank you. I, I think I think you, I think it was successful. I don't think you can tell that I was in a lot of pain. Hopefully, you can't tell. Well, I don't believe you can. Everyone that's listening worldwide right now, make sure you do go check out Death Race 2050. It's going to be on DVD, Blu-ray, January 2017. Go get it. Make sure you get this. Watch Falake. She's going to be walking sexy through the movie with a swollen knee, and you're not going to even know. That's how good she is. I'm trying to tell you. She is that good. Make sure you do get the movie. Check it out. Now, um, are there any other projects that you're working on that you would like to talk about that's outside of Death Race? Um, I'm also working, uh, well, we being released right now is Female Fight Club. I believe mm-hmm. it's been released in uh, some territories, uh, Tokyo, I think, and uh, some other parts of Europe. It hasn't been released in the U.S. yet, but it should be soon. Um, it's uh, set, set in Vegas. It's about um, an illegal underground fighting ring with all female fighters. Whoa. So are, are you fighting in the movie? Yes, I am. I actually, I actually fight with uh, an actual, like a real life MMA fighter. What? Amanda, Lady Killer. That's her name. <laughs> Good gosh! It, are, is yeah. there any type of, is there anything that you would not do, as uh, far as it goes for acting? Is there any type of? Is there anything? <laughs> yeah, there, there's actually a lot of stuff I wouldn't do. <laughs> there's a lot of <laughs> stuff I wouldn't do. But when it comes to like action and fun stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. that's, that's my territory. I like, I like doing stuff like that. Okay. Well, I like that. Yeah. I mean, good job to you. You're doing your thing. Um, how was it training as far as it goes for that movie? Not death race, but when you're actually fighting an MMA. Fight Club? Yes. How, how was uh, the Fight Club, how- I'd already been training before, before I got the part. So I, I've been, I, I had been training in Israeli martial arts. Um, so it was an easy segue. We had, um, fight choreography for the movie to prepare mm-hmm. for our scenes. And um, it went smoothly. Um, it's something I, I'd done already in stage uh, fight combat, stage combat. So I was familiar with it. Wow. Wow. Girl, you are multi-talented. <clears throat> and I love it. You are multi-talented. Okay. You're doing your thing. Female Fight Club, Death Race 2050. Make sure you check out both of these movies. It's something you have to do, everyone. Make sure you do it. Um, is there uh, is there like a specific time release there that's going to be coming to America? Have anybody talked about it? No, not that I know of yet. Uh, they're still working on a date, I believe. Okay. Not a problem. Now, what type of genre of movies do you enjoy watching the most that you like to sit down and say, okay, this is my free time. I want to pop something in. What type of uh, movie would it be? Well, they're, they're this exact same movie. Say, they, the exact same genres that I love to be in, so sci-fi, fantasy. I love mm-hmm. I love sci-fi, fantasy. So the Game of Thrones, the X-Men, the earlier X-Men franchise, oh, Underworld, yeah. uh, Resident Evil, stuff like that. Um, okay. Sci-fi adventure, action films, fantasy action. Those are those are the types of flicks I love to watch. Nice. Now, which one would you say would be your favorite X-Men movie and your favorite Underworld movie? Uh, I think my favorite X Men would probably be one of the, the first one. Sure. Okay. Uh, when they with with um, with Famke Jensen. Um, I mean Hugh Jackman has been in all of them, but uh, the first ones were my favorite with uh, with Brian Singer. So X Men One, um, Underworld. I've been I've been fine with all the Underworlds. 
Um, I've liked all of them. I'm looking forward to one coming out. And uh, Resident Evil as well. I've loved all of them. I'd love to be in Resident Evil. So if you was actually offered a spot on Resident Evil, would you take it? Oh, yeah, for sure. (laughs) Without a doubt. I hope the right people are listening right now. I'm telling you, she knows martial arts. She can handle herself. Get her in there. I hope so, too. Yes, most definitely. Um, now, how can your fan, your fans is listening worldwide right now, how can they actually follow you on social media to keep up with you to see the latest and greatest of you? Well, I'd love, I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the Falake. Uh That's the and my name, T-H-E-F-O-L-A-K-E. You can also find me on Instagram, the.falake. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook by my name, Falake Loofuyeku. Everybody and reach out. Sure. I'd love to hear from you guys, and I'd love to hey. hear what you, what you, your thoughts on the interview. If you have any other questions, that's what I'm talking about. Make sure you follow Falake Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Make sure you follow her. She's doing big things. You want to keep up with her. This is the way to do it. And she says she want to hear from the fans. So why not? Make sure you do this. This is something you do not want to miss. Make sure you follow her Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, and Twitter. Do it. Um. Now, what is your ultimate goal as an actress? My ultimate goal as an actress is to man my own franchise. Uh, Mm -hmm. In the vein of the Resident Evils on on the world, I would love uh, a project like that. Wow. And I don't see why you can't do it. I really don't. You're you're skilled in it. I don't don't see why either. I think it's definitely possible. Well, I think you need to do it, and I'm gonna be. And when you get it, I'm gonna make sure I contact you, and I'm gonna tell you. I told you you was gonna do it. I'm gonna be the first one to tell you. Okay. I already see it coming. Yes. You, now, Falake, I know you're a busy woman. You've been busy all day, and I know you're trying to relax. But so, I just have one final question for you. Um, what advice would you give any male or female that want to become an actor or an actress in the movie and television industry? I'd say study, study the craft, Um, know your body, know your face, know your range as an actor, and uh, just work on your craft, work on your talent, Um, take classes, read, read a lot. Uh, And then also, and equally as as equally important, learn the business, business side of of the industry, Uh, because they they go both, they both go hand in hand. Um, you want to make sure your talent is on point. You also want to make sure that you're, you're business-minded and you approach um, the industry uh, as a business as well as an artistic endeavor. Nice. Well, actually, for like I got one more question for you. How hard was it for you to, um, to find an agent? Because <clears throat> when people start in the movie industry, it seemed like it's hard to reach out and get an agent. How hard was it for you? Um, no, I, it wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, I've been through different situations. I mean, I started out in New York, uh, now I'm in LA, so, um, I've switched agents, but, um, I, I remember my first agent, Thompson Agency, was through a referral from a friend, and, um, and as soon as they met me, they, they, knew, they knew they wanted to work with me, and, um, so th- that was easy, and I think um, if you can find a referral, if, if you go to classes and meet with teachers who believe in your work, they'll be able to refer you and friends and 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 your peers as well. So I don't think it's that difficult. I think what is hard is finding the right fit, and um, mm-hmm. it's important not to rush into it and be vocal about how you want your relationships to work. Um, but I think the, the hardest part is finding the right fit. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen worldwide, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, ladies and gentlemen worldwide, I hope you enjoyed this interview. This is something I want to make sure if you're trying to get into the movie and television industry, I hope you paid attention. She told you what to do. She showed you. Falake is the woman. Make sure, once again, you follow her on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Make sure you do check out Death Race 2050, January 2017, and Female Fight Club. When it hits America, 
grab it. There's something you want to see. I'm telling you, I guarantee she will get nasty with that MMA fighter. I already see it coming. So, guys, thank you for coming on the show. Falake, thank you a hundred times for taking your time out today to come on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, yes, and I'd love to have you back in the future. Oh, definitely. All right. How about that? Thank you. Have a great night, and everybody else, have a great night also. Until the next time on the Bit Scoop with Coop. Uh, you know what time it is. Time to hang out yeah. with Mr. Coop. With Mr. Cooper, with Mr. Cooper, with Mr. The Cooper. Get the latest scoop from Mr. Cooper, from Mr. Cooper, from Mr. Cooper. Hey, with Mr. Cooper, with Mr. Cooper, with Mr. Cooper, with Mr. Cooper.